math video. That's right. Another one. Hey, hey, hey. welcome aboard. Oh, look at our feature insect of the week, of the day, of the year. It's our Mr. B. Thank you for coming along, my friend. Look at you. You know, no offense, but you look kind of droopy, don't you? You look, I don't know. It could just be me. You've been on a long trip, eh? I thought. Oh. Oh, you're not falling. You're not finding much pollen these days, so you're kind of depressed. Oh, I understand. No. Well, you know what? Um, we'll see what we can do to help you out because you hear it, Mr. War's Math Video Land. Well, we always help our feature animals, don't we? <laughs> Let's go ahead and take a look at our learning target. It says that we are going to be subtracting fractions, making like units numerically. Okay, and numeric. When you think of numeric, you think of number. So it definitely has to use with numbers. So I think we're slowly going to be moving away from like an area model or a for finding uh, fractions and looking for that common denominator. That's where we're going. So first things here is I want you to see we have this fraction here, one third minus one fifth. I would like to solve this problem using our models. Now in previous videos, what we did was we took a model such as this. We went ahead and we marked this. This is being a whole, right? A whole piece here. And we've shaded different parts of that area model. Since this one whole has been divided into thirds, I'm going to go ahead and shade one third of that model. And of course, that represents one third. Over here, I have one fifth. So I could shade my one fifth over here again. Uh, this here, this little quantity here, which is very, very small, and that's one-fifth. And then what we did was, is if we said that if we could divide each one of these models such that I would have this one divided into fifths, which it already is, and also into thirds, and since this one's already divided into thirds, I could also divide this model into fifths, I could get something that might look like this. Now, if I do that same shading, as I did up above, you can see that something interesting happens. Our one third now is no longer one third because this model has been divided into 15 equal pieces. Using our array, we can say that five times three. Now we have 15, which means now we don't have one third any longer. That's right, we have five fifteenths. And five fifteenths we can subtract that amount now because we're going to get a, a common denominator. Here we're going to have three fifteenths. Again, divided exactly the same. And look at our answer, two fifteenths. And that, my friends, is the basic concept of finding two fractions with unlike denominators. They're not the same. Getting that common denominator. And in this case, we call it the least common denominator because we could make all kinds of equivalent fractions and still divide this up equally and make even smaller pieces where they would both be equal. Uh, and in the end, we could add or subtract those fractions. A very important concept in fifth grade. So, key point here is that now we see that the like unit, the like unit for thirds and fifths would be fifteenths. So this time, now that we've been able to do it with a picture, let's see about doing this problem, though, without a picture and instead using an equation. And this is where our focus and our learning target is going to help guide us through tracking fractions, making those like units numerically. I'm going to write my problem again here. We have one third minus one fifth. Now, again, let's look at that. How many, how many fifteenths are equal to one third? Determine that from our, our problem was five fifteenths, right? There's five fifteenths. One third times five over five, okay? And notice that there are five times as many of these selected units here. We only had one unit here, and now when we multiply that across, we're gonna end up with five times as many selected units. And is that true down below? It is. We're gonna also have five times as many units in the whole. This is the whole part. So how many fifteenths are equal to one fifth? That's right. You recall that from up above? Three fifteenths. So let me write this down. Let's take our one fifth then times times three over three. So then this is going to be three times as many of the selected units. 
Here's also going to be three times as many units in the hole. So now I think we can write an equation based on that information that we have. So we're going to have one-third times our 5 over 5. We're going to subtract our one-fifth times 3 over 3. That's going to equal then, if we look at this here, we have 5 fifteenths, and we're going to subtract our 3 fifteenths. Now, as with addition, you know, the, the equation supports what we drew in that model up above. So 5 fifteenths minus 3 fifteenths is going to equal 2 fifteenths. So this equation supports that model. Okay? Let's move to the next problem. Woohoo, Mr. B, you're back. Hello. You know, you're supposed to have all these little lenses, they say, huh? You have like a million eyes. I can see you. Okay. Anyway, we have 3 fifths minus 1 sixth. Now, we don't have two unit fractions here. But again, I like to size up my fractions, if you know what I mean. First of all, look at the 3 fifths. We were looking at benchmark fractions, and, you know, a benchmark fraction, the half, is a great one. Of course, we have the quarter and the three quarters. They make some good benchmark fractions as well. But three-fifths lets us know we've got about a half because we can look at that denominator of five. We can determine what half of five is, which is two and a half. And so we have three. That well, lets us know it's a little bit more than half. Now, our unit fraction, one-sixth, is even smaller than the fraction we just had with one-fifth. So, you kind of get an idea. I'm wondering, what do we need to multiply by to make the three-fifths into smaller units? Could we use sixths? And if we did use sixths, what do we multiply by to make the one-sixth into smaller units? Fifth, right? Because it's going to make that denominator larger. So, we're going to multiply by five, by fifths. So let's go ahead and write that expression. So we're going to write our three fifths and we're going to multiply those by six. And notice that I'm multiplying it by six over six. Now the neat thing about one of the math principles as a property, the identity property, is that six over six is equal to one. So if I were to take three fifths times one, my answer would be three fifths. That's why I'm able to multiply by six over six and not change the value of three-fifths. Now I'm going to subtract that. Remember we put our other fraction here in the parentheses. Now we're going to multiply that by 5 over 5 and, and I'm going to bring this down here, make it easier, three-fifths times 6 over 6. Well now we have 18 over 30. We're going to subtract that from 5 over 30 and that's going to give us 13 over 30. So you need to see, did you see what happened to each fraction? Each fraction they're still equivalent when we multiplied by the 6 over 6 and 5 over 5. We just rename them into smaller units. And we're renaming them into smaller units so that we can subtract them because we need like units. And that's what that's called, like. They need to be the same. So I'm going to read this across. So I have 18 thirtieths minus 5 thirtieths is equal to 13 thirtieths. Now, a couple another thing to look at here is when it comes to reducing your fraction and putting it into simplest form. We have a lot of different ways we say that. We say that reduced fractions, simplest form, lowest terms. There's all these words that I think can kind of be confusing in math. And in this case, what we do to determine whether this fraction is in simplest form is simply by looking at the numerator and the denominator and looking for maybe a common factor that they have. Now, I'm just going to side here. I'm going to put the factors of 13. Well, there's only two of them. That means 13 is prime. With 30, there's a whole bunch. We have 1 times 30, of course. We have 2 times 15. We have 3 times 10. We have 6 times 5. Are there others? I think that's it. So the only common factors they have is 1, and that wouldn't change the value. So this is, is considered in simplest form. Bubble, bubble, bubble. Okay, so that ends this problem, 13 thirtieths. Okay, let's look at another problem. Page Turner, what are you? Ah, thank you. And Mr. B, what are you doing over there? <clears throat> Excuse me? Uh, are you trying to hide the math problem? <laughs> is that what it is? No? That's not it. What are you... I really apologize for our friend, Mr. B. 
He's not quite as astute as we once thought. Just kidding. No, you're really, you're really smart, Pete. You guys actually are incredibly smart. I've seen you make your little honeycombs out of hexagons. <gasps> My goodness, you guys, you got it going on. Anyway, let's move on with the problem. So as I look at this problem, I'm thinking, whoa, we have ourselves a mixed number now. I'm wondering what are some of the different ways that we could apply to solve this problem. Hmm. Well, let me see here. We could solve it uh, as two fifths plus three quarters. Just take the three fifths from the one to get two fifths, and then you add the three fourths. Am I losing you on that one? Let's do this one. Let's go ahead and show you. I'm just going to call this one method number one. Yeah. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Okay, method one. So we have one and three quarters minus three fifths. Okay. So this is one way we could look at this. I'm going to split one and the three quarters here into two pieces. Now, the reason why I'm going to choose five fifths over here and three quarters, of course, the three quarters is right here. But with my five fifths, the reason why I'm putting five fifths, of course, it's equal to one. But then so is four fourths, Mr. Wara. Why did you choose five fifths? And I say, okay, I'm glad you were listening because I'm going to be subtracting three fifths from that number. Wouldn't it be nice if we made the denominator the same? Yeah. So what I'm thinking here, if I could take the three fifths from the five fifths now, that would be really easy to solve. That would give me just two fifths. Are you with me on this one here, my friends? I'm taking three fifths away from that hole, which we changed to five fifths. So now we just have two fifths. Hmm, I like it. And then I'm going to add the three quarters. The reason I need to add the three quarters is remember, he was being subtracted by that. That three quarters, he was part of that number. Three quarters was part of the five fifths. So he's on this side. So we already took away the three fifths. We're done. You're over. Sorry. You had your day in the sun. It's time for the two fifths and the three quarters to take over. Now, of course, with the two fifths and three quarters, you can see we have a problem. That's right. We don't have a common denominator, but we're already getting good at that, aren't we? We can maybe just look at them. Now, we were multiplying each fraction by fifths and fourths, and we did one with the thirds and fifths and all that good stuff. So now you might recognize right away that our common denominator would be 20 because 5 times 4 is 20. Okay, we can show a model, but that's what we're going to do. And it just so happens that if you're multiplying the fifths over here by fourths, that means that fourth up at the top is going to make that into an 8. 5 times 4 is 20. 2 times 4 is 8. Okay, now we're going to add the other equivalent fraction, also going to be 20ths, of course. 4 times 5, 20. Remember, we're multiplying it by fifths, so that means we're going to have 15. Don't you just love how this works out? I do. Now we have 23 over 20, which is a perfectly, perfectly beautiful fraction. However, let's go ahead and move that in. Let's make a mixed number out of that. That's right, because this is really equal to, we could say 20 over 20, right? That's the one hole. But I also have a 3 over 20. Getting where I'm going with this here, I have 1 and 3 twentieths. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah! This isn't the only way to solve it. I mean, there are other ways, you know. There are. We could just go ahead and let's just call the next one. Maybe this is just another way. There's no special name. We're just going to call it... Method two, <laughs> okay? And method two might be a little bit easier in some ways, but let's see what you think. Now here, if we rewrite the same problem again, now we have uh, our mixed number and we have tracking. Now, rather than trying to split that mixed number apart, what we could do is just to simply leave our one here and then we're going to be adding, because this is really added, it's all one term, we call it, and just turn that into a equivalent fraction now as we did below. So my four, if I want to go ahead and, and multiply that by fifths, I'm going to get my 15 over 20, see? And then that's really being subtracted from, if you look at our problem, our equation, that's being subtracted by, then again, we're going to multiply that by four, so that's going to be 12 twentieths. And you see our equivalent fractions look a little bit different than our other ones did, and that's mostly in part because we split these completely apart. This time we're not, we're leaving the three quarters as is. 
Well, we can solve it from here. Pretty easy, right? We can put our 1. 15 minus 12 is 3 twentieths. I don't know what you're thinking. Mr. Wara, that is so much easier. Why didn't you do it that way to begin with? Eh, maybe because it's important for us to see a lot of different ways problems are solved. There's just not one way to do things. And sometimes as you manipulate the numbers in different ways, it helps you get a deeper understanding. Okay, which is so important with Common Core. But guess what? There's yet another way. We could do this another way. Let's call this way method. Oh, how did you guys know? Yeah, man, you guys are smart. Yeah, method three. Now with method three, I'll go ahead and rewrite this problem again. <laughs> again and again. Okay. Now in this case, we have one and three quarters. What we could do is we could take that mixed number and, yeah, you know, put it into a, we used to call it an improper fraction. A fraction was very improper because the numerator, right, was larger than the denominator. Now, uh, Eureka calls it the fraction greater than one. And how do we do that? Well, if we have one hole here and we were to put four fourths plus our three fourths, you can see that what we would end up having here is seven fourths. And we could do seven fourths minus three fifths. And I just, I wrote that step down so that you could see it. Obviously, if you already saw it, you could skip. Now that we have 7 quarters minus 3 fifths, what we could do is go ahead and get that common denominator. So in this case, we're going to end up with 35 over 20. We're going to be subtracting. Here, we're going to be multiplying by fourths. 12 over 20. Okay. I got my 35, but I just remember, we just were multiplying by fifths here. I don't want to lose you. Okay, but that's all we're doing, and we are multiplying over here by fourths. Okay, always remember that's where we, we first started off in this lesson. Now we end up with 20, looks like 23 twentieths, which we already determined was 1 and 3 twentieths. There's three different ways. My goodness, method 1, 2, and 3. Wow, Mr. Wara. I know that's pretty cool. And what I'm going to say is, is sometimes a particular problem may lend itself to a better method. So maybe method two, it would clearly have been the way to do this problem here. But as our numbers get larger and the whole part gets larger and the denominators maybe get larger, there may be other ways that work better. Okay, I think that finishes today's lesson. I hear the music in the background. Cool, why does it look like we have one more page? Page master, turn the page. Oh my goodness. We have here it's the swarm of bees my goodness and what are you guys doing all right cool safety in numbers you guys hey pollinate those plants we need those crops pollinated Woohoo! yeah my friends hey it's been another great time with you guys but it is time to say those famous words live long and prosper